Hey guys, it's Mila here. I hope you're all having an awesome day. So today we are on my northern hemisphere island and as you can see from the map in the corner there, it looks kind of funny. In case you watched my restart or flatten your island video, you know that I flattened my whole island over here on the northern hemisphere island. Oh my goodness, a lost item. Okay, we're gonna ignore that. <laughs> okay, so my whole island is gone. It's completely flat. There is nothing here. So it has been approximately one month now from when I flattened my whole island and it has been a slow, slow process. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys maybe some little tips on how to rebuild your island from scratch and things that have at least helped me out on my flatten and rebuild quest. It's not easy, so shout out to everyone who has ever done this because it is such a big project and it's gonna take a long time. First of all, don't be too harsh on yourself. We all struggle rebuilding our islands. It is such a massive work. I still have so, so much to do. But in today's video, I'm gonna share some little tips that have at least helped me out during this process. By the way, Label is here to remind you that if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you like it and consider subscribing to the channel for more Animal Crossing videos. Look at all of this emptiness. Okay, if I could get just one tip for someone who is rebuilding their island from scratch. It is starting from the back of your map and working towards the front. This is what I learned on my many many times flattening my whole island because I actually did this twice in a really short time. I did this first time maybe in October or um, November and then I wanted to do it again in January because I didn't like what I was doing during that like first rebuild session. On my first time rebuilding my island, I kind of started in the middle, like around my resident service area. And by middle of my island, I actually mean quite in the front, because as you can see, my resident services is really, really close to my airport. So yeah, the first time when I was rebuilding my island, or it was not the first time, but like the last time that I rebuilt my island, I started around this area. I think I started with the entrance, but that did not end up working for me so yeah I think starting from your airport doesn't seem to be working out for you try starting from the back of your map because for me it has been working way way better and I ended up not liking that map slash island that I was working on at the time and I ended up flattening the whole thing again and this comes to the first tip start from the back of your map because it makes it so much easier for you to kind of map out the space of your island it also helps you fill out the area is better and yeah you just use all the space on your island like you don't end up with those like awkward spaces that you don't know what you're gonna do with them so that is my number one tip if you're gonna take anything from this video it is starting from the back of your map and as you can see here I'm on my secret beach where red usually comes to visit like once every blue moon aka never um this little beach part here I didn't really change from my first um uh, island version. I kind of left it as it was. Like I never even decluttered this beach when I started to flatten my island because I knew I wanted to keep it the same way. Then I started to work on this uh, little secret forest area here and that is my second tip. Choose one area and focus on that one area at a time. So I started with this secret forest over here. It took me like five six hours to do this because I'm like the worst person at planning. Planning. I cannot plan like the areas that I want to create so I'm just going with the flow and I keep changing my mind like a hundred times and I wasn't prepared I didn't have any trees or bamboo or anything so I had to like time travel to make them grow and see how they looked like but anyways working on one area at a time helps out so so much uh, yeah and then you just keep moving on from the back of the map towards the front so after I finished this secret forest I knew I wanted to put a village up here. So then I moved on to the second area once I was finished with that. Let's see if I can climb up here. 
So yeah, I did end up putting Eric's house up here. After I finished Eric's house, or kind of like at the same time as I was finishing this area, I knew I wanted to bring Fauna over here so Eric and Fauna could be neighbors. And then I like decorated Fauna's area over here. I also want to add that when you focus on one area at a time and then move on to another smaller area, it kind of helps you like tie in those areas together. As you could see, I started with the secret beach and then I kind of attached Eric's area to that area and then attached Fauna's place to Eric's place. So then I kind of have this nice flow of like all these area being really close to each other. So I don't end up with those like awkward spots and I don't know how to explain these, but when I started in the middle of my island, I was kind of left with all these like awkward areas. Like I don't really know how to explain it that well. Like my English is not that great. But anyways, like this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Like it's easier when you just like attach all the areas to each other and not like work on one area on the other side of your island and then on the other area on the other side of the island, if this makes any sense. I don't know. At least this works out very, very well for me. So I kind of like used all of the space on my island. And yeah, I don't end up with those like places that I'm kind of like, you know, there is not enough space here for an actual area, but I don't know what to do with this. Like, do I make just like an awkward like centerpiece here or do I fill it with random stuff? I don't know if you know what I mean, but anyways, tying all these smaller areas together have helped me a lot. I usually also work on my island like every evening for an hour or two hours now. So yeah, you know, it's a slow process. You have to do it like a little bit at a time, but you got this. I'm telling you, you got this. Of course, I keep coming back to these areas every once in a while and changing and adding some things. And as you can see here, there is still a lot of empty spaces that I haven't really finished decorating. So yeah, honestly, like everyone struggles with rebuilding their islands and it is a long, long process. It's going to take a lot of time. So I'm going to say it one more time. Don't be too harsh on yourself. It takes a long time. Like no one is a superhuman. No one can rebuild their island in just a couple of days. So yeah you got this. And as the next area working from, from the back of the map towards the front, I have Bo's area over here. And as you can see, I'm still kind of in the middle of working, <laughs> working on this one. It's still not finished at all. Like all the trees are still growing and I have some like awkward spots here that I'm not sure what I want to do. But first of all, I was thinking I would not do anything special over here, but then I kind of had this like inspiration of doing this sunken whatever waterfall situation here. And I think it looks kind of cute. But yeah, this is one month working on my island. To be honest, I think for the first two weeks, I didn't even open my game. I didn't even visit my island. I didn't do anything. Inspiration kind of comes and goes. I just come and work on my island whenever I feel like it. So yeah, I'm not working on my island every day. What can I say? It's a long, long process. And one thing that is taking a lot of time is also that I'm kind of trying to be really smart about my bridges and inclines and trying to kind of plan where I want to put them because, you know, we have a limited number of those as well. And if you didn't know, we can only use eight bridges and eight inclines. So it kind of takes its own time and planning to think about where you want to put those as well. So yeah, that's also one point why it's taking so long because I don't want to work on my dream island and then realize that I ran out of bridges or inclines. So the next area that I should be working on is this like front part of my island. Um, Yeah, I'm not really sure what I want to do here. If I want to add one more villager somewhere around here or maybe do something else. I don't know. The museum is kind of in the way now. Now, but that would be like my next area to work on. And now, since we started from the back of the map, we have finally reached the very front. I kind of took this like technique of doing one bit of the island. So obviously you can see I didn't finish like the whole back of the island yet. So once I'm finished with this left side of the island, I will start working on the middle and then on the right side because it also helps me out a little bit. Not like finishing the whole back of the island. I don't know. I just work on my island with the vision that I have in the moment. And yeah, so far I've been really inspired to do this. So that's what I've been doing so far. Does that even make any sense? I don't know. So my next tip is using reference photos. And yeah, maybe it's really obvious, but using reference photos is like kind of
of your best friend when you're in doubt and you don't know what to do. Instagram, Pinterest have like amazing creators that you can kind of like get inspired from or you can even completely copy what they do on their eyelid and you might be like oh my goodness I cannot copy someone's ideas but you can always like take a reference photo and kind of give it your own twist and honestly if you completely copy someone's idea that is like one way to learn how to decorate your eyelid and maybe later on once you're like more comfortable with decorating or you kind of like learn your own way of doing it you might come back to those areas that you copied completely and just like change things up so don't be afraid of using reference photos that is one way to actually learn how to decorate and that's how I've also learned like some really good techniques and strategies and the ways of decorating so reference photos are such an amazing thing such a good resource to use as well when you don't know what to do I have learned so much by just like watching reference photos usually what I do I just look at few photos and I'm not like keeping that photo open when I'm decorating I'm kind of like trying to do it from memory so it makes me like not copy that idea exactly but honestly even if you copy like someone else's idea like it's just a way to learn things so don't be afraid to do that either who cares <laughs> can I even say that but honestly it is like a way to learn and you could always come back and change it once you are more better at decorating. So reference photos, such an amazing tip. I might post like some some creators that I really like, maybe in the description box or on the video. So make sure to check them out. They're mostly Instagram. Like I use a lot of Instagram to find like my inspirations. So yeah, Instagram rocks. Come follow me on Instagram if you haven't done that yet. And honestly, reference photos are also just a good way to spark some inspiration, obviously so much work to do so much work to do also one thing that has like kind of kept me from decorating my island is that I know that the snow is going to be gone soon I know my island is gonna look like completely different when there is no more snow that's why I'm also kind of trying to like decorate it in a way that it would also look good when there is no snow fall is definitely my favorite season in the game but honestly like snow can you just like go already i think two months of snow could be like more than enough also if you guys have any like really good spring custom design recommendations i would love to see those in the comments down below i'm so excited super super excited for spring and for the snow to be finally gone <laughs> One smaller tip that I can give is also settling on a theme on your island helps to decorate because obviously when you have one bigger idea of how to decorate your island, it's easier to create smaller areas surrounding that idea. So yeah, I have like this cottage core forest situation going on on my island that I really do enjoy. So I like decorating in this way and it helps me also like decorate all the smaller areas like the villager houses. So yeah, definitely settling on a theme helps so so much whether it's like fairy forest or more of this like cottage core stuff. Yeah, that definitely helps you to like decide what kind of ideas you're going for and at least eliminate the ones that you don't want to go with because let's be honest, we could have like so many different things on our island but it's good to kind of like limit yourself so you don't get so overwhelmed with everything you want to do on your island my last rebuilding tip is that it doesn't have to be perfect you know your island doesn't have to be 100% ready you can always like add more things to it and I mean I do this all the time like I want my island to be perfect and I also compare myself to other people all the time like all these amazing islands out there I'm like oh my god God, my island looks like so bad but I'm trying not to do, do that too much because you know it's your island and that's what makes it awesome yeah just give yourself time like as I said I'm a really bad planner so that also takes like so much time because if I would have like the perfect idea of what I want to do it would be so much faster but since I'm like such a bad planner one month and it's like one third of my island is not even ready yet. But one more time, don't be too harsh on yourself. You got this. Sometimes it's just like about starting. Sometimes it's really hard to just get started. And yeah, maybe working on a really small area on your island can get you, get you going. This is where those reference photos come in handy because you can take a reference photo with, let's say, a micro area and working on this 
tiny area can like spark some inspiration and get you going. Also, just know that it's okay also to feel really demotivated and feeling like you don't want to decorate your island. As I said, I think it took me like a week before I even started after I flattened my island. So yeah, just give it some time and you got this. Okay, so the last thing that I want to discuss on this video is like the last resort of if you flatten your island and you're thinking right now that you made like the worst decision of your life you don't know where to start how to do anything you're really overwhelmed and like you hate your island and you don't want to play this game ever again you might want to consider just restarting your island and this is totally up to you and i cannot really recommend anyone like wiping their save data completely out of existence but if it comes to you never playing this game ever again and starting a new island maybe that would not be the worst idea. I started my Southern Hemisphere Island not too long ago and honestly I was kind of afraid that I would really hate doing all the beginning stuff from scratch and that I would really feel sad that I lost my museum and stuff like that. Also I wanted to add that I did not lose my museum in a way I don't know what I was talking about here but uh yeah I didn't lose my museum because technically I have now two islands like two separate islands so I don't know what I was talking about here but anyways I've been actually enjoying my other island very very much as well and yeah I just guess I wanted to say that don't be afraid of starting a new island because I don't know I was a little bit afraid like I honestly thought that I would hate starting a new island for some reason but I've been enjoying it a lot so yeah sometimes starting a new island is actually a really really good way to go but anyways like if you flattened your island don't be too overwhelmed you can still rebuild it from scratch it just takes a lot of time and work so I guess you just have to be prepared for that but honestly it has been a lot of fun just starting a new island and I don't even mind that I don't have the fish and bug I'm just like working on that island super chill so yeah honestly like if you hate your island you don't know how to build it from scratch I can hear a balloon Okay, what was I talking about? <laughs> uh, restarting your island. So yeah, think about it. Honestly, like if you flatten your island, it is so much work. So at least with a new island, you will get like some of the terraforming back and you can like start fresh. Um, yeah, it obviously depends on you, like what kind of museum, if you time travel, if you have Nintendo online, if you can like maybe save some of the stuff that you've collected. It is a big decision, but this is like the last resort. Like if you honestly hate that you flattened your whole island don't be afraid to start from scratch it can be actually a lot of fun too well I think that is all for now. Those are my little tips on how to rebuild your island from scratch. I hope this helped you out maybe a little bit. Maybe it sparked some ideas on what do you want to do with your own island. Thank you for watching you guys. I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye guys!